Arsenal 5, Crystal Palace, nil. Hello and welcome to Gunners Daily YouTube channel. Great game behind us. Arsenal 5, Crystal Palace, nil. After 13 long days, Mikel Arteta's tricky reds are back in action. And it was a great game for us. Three points, easy win. Just what we needed after having only one win in the last seven games before our victory today. Out of the FA Cup, out of the League Cup. So the Premier League is our bread and butter right now. And the Champions League. But that's on hold for another month or so. So I don't want to hear any excuses from our manager or players. Oh, we are tired. We are constantly playing too many games, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where should we start? First things first, let's start with the starting lineup. So, four changes compared to our last game, Zinchenko returned from injury, Jesus returned from injury, Trossard instead of Martinelli from the first minute, and Raya back on goal, obviously. So, no big surprises there, some of our players have recovered from their injuries and we expect to see them in the starting lineup when they are ready. I guess we could say Trossard for Martinelli was a surprise, I really didn't think Arteta would bench Martinelli today, I know he's not been playing on his usual level lately, but... Trussard was also pretty poor for us so far this season, so yeah, I just thought that that was an interesting decision. He scored a goal in the end, Trussard, a wonderful goal, great move, great dribble, great shot, but yeah, I just thought that was an interesting decision. Anyway, game on. We completely dominated from the first minute, as expected. Let's be honest, you could have seen from the kickoff that Roy Hodgson arranged his team to fall back and defend. And then, if they can, to try and pass the ball to their wingers to catch us on a quick counter. Because we were standing really high up on the pitch. And boom! 11th minute, 1-0 to Arsenal. Another great header from Gabriel Magalhaes. If we're being honest, he's probably our biggest threat when it comes to set pieces. The guy just knows how to use his strength and height and create space for himself in the box. This is not a coincidence anymore, no. He's been our biggest attacking threat for some time now, when it comes to set pieces. Can you imagine if we had a striker who has that pure physical power and force? I'm just thinking, how good it would be if we had a striker who is built and has some of those qualities that Gabriel has, but is a striker. It would definitely be interesting to see how that would work. I mean, we've been talking for quite some time now how we don't have a striker who fits that profile. Gabriel Jesus has a lot of different qualities, he's been excellent today, but he's definitely not a strong presence in the opponent's box, nor is he great in the air. You get my point. I completely went off track here, so let's get back to the game. 36th minute, another goal from the corner, and once again, it's Gabriel Magalhaes. What can I say at this point? The guy's just phenomenal in air. Another great header, but it's also important to mention Bukai Saka and give him a praise. What a delivery. Beautiful technique, uh, curve on the ball, great stuff. Two corners, two goals, unbelievable. One thing I have to admit are set-piece specialists, the people who work on that aspect of our game every single day in training, really deserve their salary. Not just because of today, but in general. I think last season also, if I remember correctly, we were the team who scored most headers at some point during the season, and we considered the fewest goals from corners and set pieces in the league, if I'm not mistaken. So, the praise goes to those guys who made it possible, and our players, of course. All in all, that was it for the first half. Although we scored two goals, it wasn't exactly the most exciting half of football that I watched this season, or this month, or week. But hey, we scored two goals, kept a clean sheet, everything's been clicking for us, so let's talk about the second half. 60th minute, Landry Chassard, 3-0. Great ball from Gabriel Jesus, even better move, dribble from Landry Chassard and cold, cold finish from the Belgian. Like I already said at the start of this video, not the best season for him so far, so I'm really happy that he scored that goal. He needed that to regain some of his confidence and form. All in all, great goal. In the 69th minute, Arteta made first changes and I was really happy to see Emil Smith-Rowe entering the pinch alongside uh, Gabriel Martinelli. We have to give him more game time, we simply have to. Especially with all the injuries that we currently have. In my opinion, I still think Emil Smith Rowe, talent wise, pure talent wise, let's put it that way, is still the best player that we produced in the Hale End in the last 10 years or so. In my opinion. A few minutes later, Declan Rice also left the pitch and Jorginho replaced him. Then, in the 80th minute, Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Magalesh left the pitch for Jakub Kivior and Eddie Enketia. 
And in the dying moments of the game, when we all thought it's going to end 3 0 for Arsenal, Martinelli masterclass with two goals. Two almost identical goals. Brilliant for Martinelli. Brilliant pass from Jorginho for the second goal. I mean, at that point, even before those two goals, Crystal Palace's whole team and structure completely fell apart. No game plan. They are losing 3 0 in the 90th minute. Their defenders are all over the pitch. Complete chaos. You could have seen that Troy Hodgson was also in shock. Like, what is going on? What What's happening? But you know what? I'm glad that Arsenal took those chances. And I'm especially happy for Gabriel Martinelli. I just made a video a few days back about him and his problems so far this season. Where I said that I still think he has all the potential to become a world-class player for Arsenal. And to become a future legend of this club. Still only 22 years old. And yeah, really, really happy for him. He needed that. What else? Well, I think that is it. All things considered, great game from us. Just what we needed after all those defeats in the last month or so. Clean sheet, five goals scored, three points. I mean, this is something we can build on for the rest of the season. There's still a long way to go till May. And everything is possible. There's still, what, 16, 17, 18 games left to play, something like that. So that means a lot of points are still there for the taking. We also have the Champions League in a month or so, but we will talk about that. As for Crystal Palace, I'll admit, I haven't really watched them that much this season. But my oh my, they are absolutely dreadful. We've seen those banners directed at uh, their owner. And I completely understand their rage with this current board and team and manager. They are only, what, five points above the relegation zone. And they already play their game, so they could potentially be only three points above the relegation zone when this game week ends. Look, it's not like they've been playing some brilliant football for these past few years. Let's not lie to ourselves. But still, there was a period when we massively struggled against them. Because they were always well-organized, compact, uh, tough to break. But this current team, their current squad is just atrocious. I mean... I know that they played against Arsenal at the Emirates, but still, they used to cause us big problems throughout the years at the Emirates. So to see how far they've fallen this season, I'm not saying they will get relegated. I still think there are worse teams than them in the league, but hey, who knows? If they continue playing like this, everything's possible. Bear in mind, I just checked. They have one win in their last 12 games. One win in their last 12 games. By the way, I just remembered, where is Rob Holding? Is he injured or what? How is he not playing for this current Crystal Palace side? You can't tell me that he isn't good enough to be a starter for this current Crystal Palace side. I completely forgot about him. Where is that guy? Palace fans, if you're watching, tell me what's going on with Rob Holding. Why is he not playing? Anyway, Nottingham Forest, Liverpool, West Ham and Burnley. Our next four games before our Champions League match against Porto. And look, I'm just gonna say it. If we want to stay in the run for the Premier League title, we have to beat every single one of those teams. Including Liverpool at Emirates. There's no other way around. We are not in a position where we can drop any point against any opponent in the league. Not if we want to continue fighting for the title. All in all, great performance from the team, great match, five goals scored, three points in the bag, clean sheet, perfect, perfect, perfect. Before we end, I'm just gonna take a quick look at some of your comments on my post after the game. So let's see. Micho Gary says, this is why we need to constantly rotate Martinelli and Trussard. You know what? I see what you're saying, and I agree to some extent, but I still think Martinelli should be our starter. But there's some truth in that. Because both of them, it seems like both of them play better when they come off the bench. Or when they are not playing the full 90. So, yeah, it's interesting. Leafy's body says, this is the Arsenal we need. Brilliant performance. Joshia Boy says, the break we needed to get back firing on all cylinders. Imno says, that second goal should have gone to Gabriel. I agree, even if the ball didn't hit uh, Dean Henderson, it would have gone into the, into the net. So, I don't get it. How is that now to Gabriel goal? But, okay. Bosch Anchor says, great result, but Palace were shockingly bad. And you know what? I agree. They were truly shockingly bad. Like I said, I didn't watch Crystal Palace that much this season, but I didn't expect him to be this bad. Great performance from Arsenal. Make no mistake. And if 
I don't know, Brighton was on the other side of the pitch today, I think we would still dominate against them. Because it was just our day. Everything went our way, but still. And Jay Charles says, you only played a pub team. And that's it for today's video. So Gunnar, tell me, what are your thoughts on the game? Who was your man of the match? Write down in the comments. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.